Great. This is your vocab for 1920s, Unit 6. Um, on the second page of the slideshow, you'll see some um, directions. Again, watching this tutorial is very important to get some background knowledge on the word. Then you're going to talk about, you're going to, you know, go through and create your own definitions. You're going to do that by creating either your own simplified definition, a synonym, or an example for that word. And then you can use Google image search either inside of Google Slides or Google Docs, or you can go outside and, and copy and paste into there to find an image that kind of represents that word to the best of your ability. You'll notice that there's 14 words on this uh, slideshow. Okay, so um, this is what you should have in front of you. You should have the definitions, and these are the um, different columns. You can see that the words go down, and I, I tried to put them in order of how I think we're going to learn about them this unit. Uh, it might not be perfect, but it's what I kind of tried to do. Um, so let's start with normalcy. This is a campaign slogan of Warren Harding. He's going to be president after Woodrow Wilson. Um, I believe Harding, Harding is the 20... Uh, ninth president of the United States. And after the war, returning to normalcy, how were things before the war? Well, we were an isolated nation. In terms of European affairs, we, we were imperialist on our side of the world, but we wanted to kind of stay out of European affairs and kind of work on our empire, so to speak, our, our side of the globe in the Western Hemisphere with Latin American affairs and, and making sure we're kind of being that police force on, the, on, on our side. But really, it's returning to a, a policy away from Europe. And this is what's going to get him elected. All right. The second thing we're going to talk about is prohibition. Prohibition is the ban on alcohol. We talked about this through the temperance movement in Unit 3 with the Progressive Era. And we're going to kind of talk about now that prohibition is banned, what are some consequences of this? What is this going to lead to? Um, and the 18th Amendment of the United States is what banned prohibition. And, and ironically, the 21st, which is the legal drinking age, uh, 21st is what repealed it. Uh, bootleggers. These were the individuals who were uh, illegally transporting and selling alcohol during the prohibition period, 1919 to 1933. Uh, it lasted about a decade and a half. And it's going to lead to some things like organized crime. So organized crime, you know, mafia, if you will, they were bootleggers. And they smuggled and stole alcohol and made it illegally. And one of the places where people would go to drink alcohol in the, at the, in the nighttime were these secret hidden bars and clubs called speakeasies. And a lot of times you had to have like a secret uh, code to get in. And um, sometimes they had like trip, trip doors or trick doors to get in like behind a bookshelf or, you know, if you press the button, it would mechanically turn around and all of a sudden you'd be on the other side in the secret area. That's that was a bar and the other side of a hardware store or on the other side of a restaurant or something like that. These were, you know, the rise of, of some of the culture of the 1920s that we're going to talk about this unit. Uh, we're going to go with the assembly line. We did mention this earlier this year, and um, but remember the assembly line is going to really come into fruition in the 1910s and 20s. And it's going to really lead to the in, even improved mechanization of our society. And it's basically where one person did one task on the assembly line over and over again, but it, it provide a more efficient way of getting products made and out to market faster. So that's the assembly line. Henry Ford is the one who's revolutionized that. Uh, then we have electrification, process of, of, of providing electric light across our country. And you can see here from the image of workers trying to um, connect more suburban and rural areas to make them electrified away from the cities. The cities were getting electrified faster but the further away from the cities, the more difficult it was. But this is gonna, again, having electricity is gonna make the light at night happen. It's gonna make, you know, machinery work through electricity is gonna make the machinery uh, more efficient and cheaper to use and uh, more um, kind of diverse in terms of its use. We're gonna talk this unit as well about something called fads. Uh, fads are things that happen over a short period of time, usually. And they're really popular, 
And um, sometimes it's an activity and interest in this picture. You see flagpole sitting. That's a very popular 1920s fad, along with dancing the Charleston, silent films, um, playing mahjong or crossword puzzles. Uh, there's all kinds of fads that develop. Some of them last over time. Some of them fade away. Um, you know, think about fads that happen now. Think about dances that happen and types of music. And, you know, we can talk about this in class and go on and on. Installment buying is our next word. Installment buying is where instead of paying for everything up front, you pay for something over the course of several weeks or months or years. So instead of buying a car, right, and buying it all now, you pay for five years a monthly charge. That's installment buying. And that's going to come out in this time period where instead of buying everything all at once, now you usually pay interest on that. So you that whatever $5,000 item might have a 5 or 10% interest charge. So you might end up paying over the course of a year or two more than $5,000 on it. But since you're only doing a monthly payment, you can actually afford it. Whereas before... If you didn't, couldn't afford the whole thing, then you couldn't buy it. Uh, intolerance is something we're going to talk about as well during this unit, during this unit because of the ride, the kind of the second rise of the Ku Klux Klan, and um, this idea of nativism that we'll talk about next, where you know it was favoring of native-born versus immigrants. So there's going to be a lot of unwillingness to accept different views during this time period of the 1920s, um, and nativism is going to be our next vocab word. So again, it's that idea that, you know, because of wars we fought and because of the fact that many um, immigrants have come to the country over the course of the last several decades, um, native born Americans are starting to feel a little bit of um, hatred towards immigrants because maybe they are not assimilating or not accepting the American way. They're trying to bring their own way of things to the United States. And sometimes that scares people. Um, next is the quota system. During this time period, we're going to see um, a limiting of, of, you know, certain nationalities, how many may enter the U.S. per year. You can see from this uh, picture uh, using that idea of a filter um, because, you know, all these people want to go in, but only a certain amount can come into the United States. So that's a quota system. There's three more words. Red scare. Whenever you think of red, you usually think of communism. Because uh, the Soviet Union, their flag is red. And there was a fear during this time period of, of immigrants having radical political views and believing communism and, and leading some, some uh, demonstrations and, and, and uh, you know, leading some marches and things like that and, and displaying literature. And um, there's this, this idea that we should contain that red scare and we should eliminate these people from our country and, and deport them. Um, one of the cultural phenomenons of the 1920s was called the Harlem Renaissance. And you can see some of the famous, uh, you can see Duke Ellington and Langston Hughes here. And I think that's Billie Holiday on the right. Um, but the black cultural movement that, that originated in the Harlem section of New York City, music, art, literature, um, and then spreading nationwide and, 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 you know, not just black people that were interested in, but all races and all genders, you know, it was for everybody and everyone starts to use this, this time period of jazz and blues and, and writing and literature to influence their own ideas. And last is migration. We're also going to talk about the Great Migration during this unit. And the Great Migration was a, a movement of African Americans from the southern part of the United States where there was a lot more discrimination and violence to northern cities. Um, you can see some of them uh, on this map, a couple in the west as well. And they're moving there for to escape the violence, but also to um, have some opportunities to work in cities. And, and this great migration is going to change the landscape of the United States and how, you know, um, African Americans that are dispersed throughout the United States, instead of just being confined to the south, there's gonna be a lot more African Americans spread throughout the country. Okay. All right, if you haven't done so already, begin working on the two columns to the right and uh, make sure you write down the due date. Uh, that'll be posted to Google Classroom. If you have any questions, let me know.